Welcome to Be Strong, a weekly vlog by Pastor Tunde Aru Logan. Hello, everyone. Yo, welcome to MFM Tallinn Weekly Online Broadcast Tag Be Strong. We are happy to see you watching our videos. We believe you are getting blessed by them. We trust God that this broadcast will bless you mightily as well. In Jesus' name, Amen. Today, by the grace of God, I will be continuing on the topic I started in the last podcast, which is, are you a Christian? So today, it will be part two of, are you a Christian? And we established that it was in Antioch that the disciples of Jesus were first called Christian. We established that in the book of Acts, chapter 11, verse 26. Let's read that again to refresh our memory. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that the whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. I want you to underline that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And compare that to our current day Christian. They assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. Compare that with our current day Christian. Now let's go to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 4. Let's start from verse 14 to verse 16. Then I will tie both of them together. Luke chapter 4 from verse 14 to 16 and jesus returned in the power of the spirit into galilee and there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about and he taught in their synagogues being glorified of all should i read that again verse 15 and he taught in their synagogues being glorified of all mean that Jesus was going from one church to the other in every city he went. Let's move on. Verse 16. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom, that is, as usual, the way he does, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, meaning that Jesus was always present in the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up for to read. Listen to me very well. Whether you call yourself an itinerary minister, an evangelist, or a new believer, there's something consistent with Jesus that must be consistent with us if we claim to be a Christian. And what is it? Is that Jesus, one way or the other, find himself to always be in the synagogue on every Sabbath day, as much as is in his power. So, my fellow believers, I know you claim to be born again. I know you claim to be spirit-filled. But... The Bible says you should not despise the gathering of what? The brethren. There is a high pandemic of so-called Christians that have quit going to church. Why? Because you believe all churches are fake. So what happened to the ones you are listening online? Oh, all the churches in your community are not up to the spiritual standard that you want. That is why you are not attending them. Interesting. Oh, you do not like the, the pastor of that church. Oh, interesting. Oh, the members of those, of those churches are not friendly. They are not welcoming. What a wonderful excuse. Do you know that sometimes... In some of the synagogues that Jesus went, he wasn't welcome, but he still marked his attendance in those synagogues. You see, 
my fellow brethren, if you claim to be an evangelist and you are preaching the scriptures, you are preaching the gospel, you are traveling from city to city, I think you also need to be fed. You need to be fed with the word of God. You need to connect with the local community. And how do you do so? You need to have a what? A stopover at the churches of God, wherever you found yourself. You need to have a stopover at the churches of God, wherever you find yourself. You may learn new things just by worshipping with them. You may discover new things. You may discover a, a move of God that you know nothing about. Let me tell you the truth. Revival is happening in every spell of the world currently. We may not know about some because some are not loud. But revival is revival. Revival is when men are renouncing their sins and accepting Jesus and the Holy Ghost is baptizing men and there signs and wonders all over the place. Sometimes it may not be loud. The Holy Spirit may be doing underground work in various cities of the world. Even in places where the gospel is forbidden. There's revival there. So, my brother and my sister, why have you stopped going to church? Why have you stopped going to church? There is, by the grace of God, churches in most cities of the world, except in cities and countries where it is forbidden. Even in Muslim countries, we have Christian churches now permitted. So, my brother and my sister, you have no excuse of not joining your other brethren in worshipping and fellowshipping. Remember, you yourself are not, you are not perfect. So stop condemning the church of God. Stop criticizing the church of God. But rather, roll up your sleeves, join the workforce of the church of God, and make your impact felt. Wherever, whatever you think is lacking in the church of God, and you have the capacity to make the impute, humbly submit yourself to the protocols of whatever church you find yourself and serve there. And remember, you can't just come and want to be pointing at the weakness of the church. You must first join them, celebrate their strengths, acknowledge their labor, and prove, pr propose new ways of doing things, not condemning, not saying, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad. Who may do a judge over the church of God? We are all believers, fellow laborers in the house of God. So, I don't know who needs to listen to this. Your excuse of not going to church is not permitted. So, if you don't like the face of the pastor, still go to church. Yes, it's not the pastor you have gone to sin, but you have gone to listen to the word of God. And the word of God can come through anybody that climbs the pulpit. Even those that will be greeting you at the door, the word of God can come through them to you. So your excuse is invalidated. Make sure you get yourself dressed and join other believers in the nearest church to you this coming Sunday. And as you do so, the Lord bless you mightily in Jesus' name. You can take our videos, share with all your friends and loved ones. I believe you have been blessed by them. Remember, these broadcasts have been brought to you by MFM Tallinn. It's our weekly online broadcast. We've called it Be Strong. We put it out of the scriptures, Ephesians 6 verse 10 that says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. I'm your friend in the school of prayer and deliverance, Pastor Tunde Ablogu. God bless you and see you next week. Bye. Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming to our Be Strong show every week. This is the place where we, the MFM Talon family, meet every week to talk about what we've done and what makes us happy. We are a group that feels good about how we stick together and what we've done as a team. Whether you're old or new here, 
you're always welcome and needed in our lively group. Our saying is be strong, a push that every day is a chance to face hard things and get stronger. Join us in church as we praise, pray, and feel the power of unity in MFM Talon, the place of praise, prayer, and power. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube so until we see each other again, stay strong in the Lord. Remember, every day opens up a new chance to be strong.